You are listening to the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show, produced by The Banyan Collective. Find more mind-blowing podcasts at thebanyancollective.com and on iTunes. The Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. Adventure for your ears. All right, welcome to a special edition of the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. This is our annual now uh, restaurant week. Thanks, Sydney, with Visit Ogden. Um, what are we going four, four years strong, I think, with this podcast? So, see, I wanted to say at least four years. Yeah, it feels like maybe we've even done it longer than that. I want to say this is my fifth podcast with you guys. So we've been doing nice. it for four nice. years, sure. and this is the fifth season. Mm. If that makes sense. I wish for a fifth we had like a pen or something. I need to have something <laughs> special for that because you've got to be getting up there as far as most visited. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to think of who that else. we give you've away got to be like in the top. Yeah, we need a banyon pin. To give because she's been or on like so many times. Like maybe a mug yeah, or a. Yeah. I, like I will that. take all the swag. You yeah, know, on SNL swag. they've got like a like a it's like a dining coat. It's like this really nice coat that's got like a five timers club. Oh, nice. So maybe a so coat a five of some a five kind. timers club. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, I, I love like that, that idea. Too. So we're hanging out here at the Angry Goat, and we have Bo. Thank you so much for joining us from the Angry of Goat. Of course, yes. Uh, he's do, pulling double duty. He is actually working, folks. So this is part of now you're marketing and running <laughs> the, the front of the house over there. And then we have Amali here from? The Lighthouse Lounge. One of my favorite bars in town. Uh, and you're in, the, you're in like the thick of it starting next week because you're running. Oh, yeah. yeah run, it's running the behind the scenes. Yeah, in the kitchen, we all we all came together for it, but I'm, uh, I guess I get to be the ringmaster and coordinate <laughs> things. To keep your boys and your girls like just calm, especially anybody that's find new to chill. the situation. Yeah, find your place, your safe place. Slide. Uh, so we, before we get into the specifics, let's talk about Restaurant Week itself, uh, where it came from, how many years you've been running this. Do you know how many I years do. is this? Yeah, so this is the seventh annual event. Seventh, seventh year. Annual. And do you remember how many restaurants participated the first year? Oh, that is a trick question. My stumper of the day. Is, yeah. I believe around 13 restaurants, 13 so, to 15 okay. restaurants participated in the first year. And okay. so the event has definitely grown as yeah. Ogden has grown. Um, and it uh, caters to all locally owned restaurants. So independent restaurants is the focus of this event. Um, trying to encourage people to eat locally and support our, our local restaurants. So the restaurants, we have we have 21 restaurants participating mm-hmm. this year. And you'll find the restaurants between the Ogden Arch and 25th Street or 26th Street and then between Wall and Jefferson. So fairly centralized. Yep. So it's downtown Ogden. You can walk to every single restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, I highly encourage people to visit more than one restaurant. There's lunch offerings and dinner offerings. So So what's your record? My record yeah. is 20 restaurants, <laughs> so I haven't made it a season where I've been able to go to all 25 restaurants. It's a lot of eating, you guys, and <laughs> and um, keep in mind, so it is restaurant week, but it is an extended week, so this year it's a nine-day event, um, so it runs Thursday through Saturday, um, uh, April 4th through the 13th. And there, I mean, it is possible to go to all 21 restaurants and I've had people in the past visit all restaurants. So they'll go to lunch and then a couple of dinners or they'll have lunch and a liner. Is that a word? A liner. Liner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then dinner. Um, I like to try and hit up a couple dinners with I'll, I'll get a group of friends and we'll pick out two or three restaurants and just kind of make a night of it. And we're super full at the end can barely move you're rolling me off 25th street but it's it's really fun um my favorite thing about restaurant week is it's a time to spoil yourself so Mm. when i go out to eat i typically order a really awesome cocktail or beer to go with my dinner and so then i skip an appetizer or dessert because Mm. i'm treating myself with that beverage um and with restaurant week it's a really great time to explore um, some appetizers and desserts that you might not normally order when you do go out to dinner. And so you really get to experience um, a lot more from the restaurants. And then a lot of our restaurants are also getting really creative during restaurant week and they're offering things on their menu that they're wanting to try out to see if they want to put on their regular menu or they just want to have fun with the week. So Lucky Slice Pizza, for instance, you know, we all love their pizza. They're doing sandwiches this year. Oh, so, yeah, they're always 
is creative. So yeah, okay. yeah, super like creative. Sliders. I want to see what a lucky slice sandwich looks like. <laughs> Whatever it is, Cade made it, so you know it's great. Yeah. You know, like, I, I think we're gonna say what's gonna be good. Yeah. We're all gonna be really surprised to see. They're gonna cut a rice krispie treat in half. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna put some toppings in between. I know it. I can see it already. Yeah. yeah. I um, think I like Liner better than Dutch. I was just thinking about the opposite of that. And Leonard does sound much better. Are you still doing the, you make it to all of the restaurants? Competition. Yeah. Competition type thing? Absolutely. So it, uh, the restaurants all pitch in a few gift cards so that mm. I can give out to the diehard foodies who do decide to eat at all 21 restaurants. So how you enter is um, you need to have a public profile on Instagram. Um, if you don't have Instagram and you're participating on Facebook, then you need to make sure to tag um, Ogden Restaurant Week or share those photos it's with Restaurant Week. one of those Restaurant situations Week. where if you do not take a selfie, it really didn't happen yeah, for this competition. Ex exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so make sure to use the hashtag Ogden Restaurant Week and devour Ogden um, when you are eating at, and, and take photos. I know I forget to take photos when I go out to dinner because I get so focused on eating. So even if you do take a photo of an empty plate, if it's at the end and you're like, oh, no, I ate here and I, I made it to you know, my 21st restaurant and I forgot to take a photo, take a photo of the empty plate or like a selfie of you at the restaurant. Share it. Tag Restaurant Week. Share with me, you know, what you loved about your meal. And that's a way to enter. So um, in the in the past, I've had two or three people enter. So your chances are pretty high. Did you have any last year? We did. We had about three people do it last wow. year who ate at all. We had 25 restaurants last year, and we had three people who ate at all 25. And so I, I had to give all three of those people, you know, some gift cards because that is impressive. Like if you can make it to to all the restaurants, like even just a time management thing. Like they did really good to so split that's what, that out. Ten days. Yeah. Yeah, nine. Yeah, yep, yeah. nine days. Nine so days, nine, days. nine right. days to make it to twenty-one right. restaurants this year, um, and if you can do it, you will be rewarded. Oh. And for those who, you know, if you can't make it all twenty-one restaurants, but you do get out and you do tag your photos with visit Ogden and hashtag Ogden Restaurant Week, you'll also be entered to win a few gift cards from us as well. So get out, eat, enjoy, support our our local restaurants. Ten dollars oh. for a two-course lunch. $17 for a three course dinner. Yeah. And so we'll get a little bit more specific when we talk to Bo and Molly, but this pricing applies to all the restaurants. It sure does. So, um, you know, Hearth on 25th Street, it's a two course lunch for $10 and a three course dinner for 17. And then they actually have a bonus. So there are one restaurant that has a six course menu for $40. And that is one hell of a bargain. Like I um, went up to Jackson Hole, took myself out to a really fancy multi course dinner and spent like 200 bucks. And I was still hungry afterwards. Um, you're not going to feel that way after you have a six course meal at hearth on 25th for 40 bucks. It is a, a still, um, but then same with lucky slice, um, you know, a two course for 10 and a I three want a course six for course 17. lucky slice meal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to request that for next year. I want to see what that looks like. Some collie buds and a <laughs> rice crispy tree. And <laughs> I think we can space it out just right. Yes. Uh, so now is definitely a good time to fully introduce our special guest today. Uh, Bo, what's your last name, Bo? It's Bradbury. Bo Bradbury. What a fancy last name. Yeah, Very nice. I feel like fancy. I need to say it, Bradbury. <laughs> yeah. Bradbury, yeah. I like yeah. the author, but no relation. Uh, exactly. Okay, so we are getting to know you, um, and we're getting to know a little bit about Angry Goat. So let's sort of fill in a little bit about your restaurant. Right. It's a good time to chat about, you know, how I, I feel like you've been here longer than you probably have, so let's be a little specific about when you guys opened. We opened... Um, was it 2017? Uh, July of 2017. But we kind of branched from a previous restaurant, the McCool's. Um, some of the owners owned parts of the Angry Goat, and we came from McCool's, and they invited me to be on board. And I said, yeah, absolutely, but I don't want to be an Irish pub. Um, so we came up and eventually came up with the Angry Goat, and we got a new place we were out of the Ben Lomond Hotel in their little pub there, um, but we branched out for many reasons, and we took this spot that used to be a heebie-jeebies, and we pretty much gutted the whole thing and redesigned it, and well, just kind of let the building do the work, really, and and then we became the Angry Goat, and we opened, yeah, July of 2017, but since then, the McCool's partners have sold out their portion, and now... Um, there's four other local guys that bought in um, and took over the McCool's part of it. 
So gotcha. So there are a few remnants of McCool's. I did see their sign. You kind of yeah. as you go if you're coming through the back mm-hmm. door. But for the most part, you are fully angry goat at this point. Absolutely. Uh, so you have <laughs> to tell us. A full angry goat. You're a full angry goat. <laughs> you have to tell us because I'm going to ask you if I if I don't ask you on the <laughs> microphone. Uh, I think I know the the name. Uh, it's a not very exciting story. Um, <laughs> so maybe the mystery is better, but I still uh, want to know at this point. This is when he makes stuff up. Is it was, uh, so no very, drinking it was, involved? It, it came, oh, there's always drinking involved. Okay, fair but, enough. Uh, it this came, is a bar. It, it came yeah. really late in the game. We had another name picked out, which was most of the name was already taken by another local place. Uh, and so through many panicked emails and we had like a sign in design and everything for our previous name and... Eventually, we came up with the Angry Goat, and I liked it because it was still pubish, like old world kind of pub, but oh, yeah. it didn't tie into anything too Irish specific. I didn't want to put us in a box to say that we're only Irish, but we're we're just an American local pub. So, so you specialize in what we uh, we make uh, all our food from scratch, and we have little about 250 beers. Um, in selection, so we specialize in yeah, a good selection, I guess. Uh, we have just about a hundred different spirits as well, so we have a a very decent, well selected uh, spirit collection and about yeah, roughly about 250 beers. Now, did you start with 250 beers? Did you kind of work your way up to that point? Uh, we started with just about 200, and it's yeah, it was very difficult at first. Uh, we got yelled at by many uh, local liquor stores. Uh, we had, we ended up having to go to the Salt Lake Club store because we were ordering too many quantity for them for us to hand for them to handle us and yeah we started out with pretty much the day we opened we got the city approval to open and we opened that day and the, by the time we had guests coming in we had roughly about 200 beers on the floor trying to shove into a cooler. So I think I mentioned to you before I do have you know years of experience uh, over over at Slackwater was another place that's got a good beer selection yes I do. who's your uh who's your beer guy gal i did it for up until very very recently um and so then you have I, a history with beer you like beer as yes well. absolutely and slackwater definitely helped me with that and uh dana over there has been a huge help mm-hmm. i mean even oh, nice. to this day she's awesome she i mean we play obviously very nice they're good friends of ours we go over there they come over here oh i um, see them yeah i love it it goes both directions for sure yeah um but yeah, so I did it for a very long time, and then I have a very passionate uh, server who does a very excellent job, and now I kind of promoted her into the position of doing it, and she has, I mean, tons of passion for it and more free time than I have to have to take care of it, so she does better than I could. Now, how often do you change out your beer, uh, seasonal-wise? Do you have a sort of a core group that stays, and then you're constantly introducing for the seasons? Yes. Are you introducing new labels constantly? Constantly new labels. So I'm always putting in new prices in the computer every week for new beers. That sounds um, familiar, yeah. And we rotate yeah, out, with the, out with the old and in with the new. And, yeah, there's always the core top sellers, obviously. And, yeah, just to have that standard selection of always, you know, like from around the world and heavily, heavily local as well so okay so outside of a domestic and I, I haven't looked at that your selection of just like a Budweiser do you carry like a Budweiser Bud Light any we of those do. We keep what's them, your biggest seller we put them on the the rack of shame um, <laughs> is, what we, is what we call it we put yeah. the Budweiser's in the fridge we hide them away but we do have them for those people who want them I think you need a little sign above it that says that <laughs> that's the <laughs> rack of shame um, one of our top sellers uh, has to be Keto's probably Keto's is selling really well. Keto's is really yeah. good. Yeah. You have a Keto's right now? Which one's that? I do. She so does. I love to blend my Keto's. Mm. So I have the coconut stout mixed with the coffee cream ale, and it is excellent. That it coffee is. cream ale. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and one of the best things out there. Excellent yeah. marketing on their part, because now I always have to have just the two Keto's handles on. <laughs> I can't just have one, but I have to have both. Which that is, was really which smart. Fine, That's a so great idea. Is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the... Food, um, if I'm the first, you know, first timer, first time in, uh, where do I start? If I'm the second time in, you know, where do I continue? So, so um, some of our top sellers, I guess, are the Angry Goat Balls. Um, not what it sounds like. So that's a creamy risotto that we make. But the name is just scary. Oh, yeah. It's like, I have to try it. That's why we named it that. Brilliant. <laughs> and then you always get to say, here are my goat balls, you know, but... <laughs> 
Yeah, we make a creamy risotto, saute wild mushrooms, and wrap it around uh, mozzarella, panko bread, and deep fry it. So that's a good starting point for the first time. Our angry goat burger is one of the our top sellers. It's delicious. Three quarters of a pound. Uh, the spicy bacon on it is to die for. Sharp white cheddar. It's excellent. Wow. Cook it to temperature. What's your amazing. go-to lunch? Uh, it'd probably be that, honestly. You but, did that one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the Danny Boys, an excellent. It's a very East Coast-style sandwich. It's very rich. It's got roast beef and uh, um, salami and American cheese and uh, grilled tomatoes and onions, and it's just very this very rich. I mean, it kind of fills you with shame after you, you eat it. But I think it's good to have a little bit of shame afterwards. <laughs> I think it's that sort of guilty pleasure of it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so do you, I'm, I'm guessing at this point, uh, I'm assuming this point, you've got restaurant work selection lined up as mm -hmm. far as what you're going to put out there. Um, anything off the menu we have to look forward to? I think, uh, I guess against recommendations, I think we did most everything off of the menu. Mm. I like uh, that it gets recommendations, <laughs> I'm guessing from the back of the house, yeah. Uh, just so we're able to play with stuff and test stuff before we put it on the menu. We do exactly, have, yeah. I mean, we have some fish tacos coming, which everybody's always asked, mm. you need to do fish tacos um, or tacos entirely. Um, we have a poutine as well on the way that we're oh, doing, nice. which, which again, it's like, it's pub food. We have to have it. So that's yeah. something we're going to be working on. And that's, and I guess you'll have to come in and see for the rest, I guess. I love it. Well, thank you for the tease yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Feel free and, and stick around if you can, but if you need to skedaddle, sure. I understand. Um, Molly, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, you represent the Lighthouse. Uh, Lighthouse has been around just a little bit longer. Yeah, a little bit. Um, new ownership for the past five years, you know. Um, no longer in Gentleman's Club. We also moved locations to uh, the old Angelos. So it's, it's kind of nice being in, once again, the older buildings and... You know, oh, no, it gives Lighthouse has plenty of character. There's no question about that. <laughs> uh, I think just across the board, that's probably a good word for it. So you are representing, uh, you are the back of house, the kitchen manager. That is correct. Is that, yeah. Did I nail the position just the, right? The lead edible alchemist. Yeah. Excellent. I like the words. <laughs> and so let's start from that perspective. How long have you been with Lighthouse? I've been uh, with Lighthouse off and on for uh, the past uh, um, two, almost three years. So you have seen Restaurant Week in action. Oh, that I have. Uh, started a week before Restaurant Week in 2016. And, uh, okay, I'd, I love the opportunity of asking you about. <laughs> so, oh, it's too late. <laughs> it's too, oh, no, that was a beautiful year. <laughs> See, that's, what I'm, that's the answer so I'm quickly. looking for. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, is that you will see an increase in, in new guests, right, and new customers. Yeah. And so that's really the beauty of the Restaurant Week is that – um, because it works because it works yeah yeah and you know yeah. that it works from yeah. previous years and so because of that restaurants at this point uh, we're going into the seventh season that they have to schedule accordingly like oh. you are gonna have people in seats yeah that yep that's, uh, that's kind of <laughs> what we're looking at i think what the most exciting part is is when people are planning out their lunches specifically i don't think people necessarily think about going to lighthouse lounge or angry go or harp and hound for lunch and these bars have amazing food and awesome specials too like lighthouse lounge has five dollar specials um so does um, harp and hound and it's it's a really great alternative if one of the other restaurants might be a little bit busy at, mm -hmm. at lunchtime no, that's a good yeah, point. exactly carrying our dynamic and thriving exactly so yeah. your your experience in back house we were talking a little bit before the show uh you know moved up here from las vegas to utah which seems like a perfectly natural you know <laughs> yeah to come back um, and uh, and and that being said when you started with the lighthouse you did what you worked back in the kitchen i'm assuming yeah that is correct uh you worked yourself up to your kitchen manager pretty quick like yep that is correct your uh, skills shine <laughs> well i hope so because i mean i quit electrical engineering to cook food at a pub you know <laughs> electrical engineering i like that background that's fantastic <laughs> you got to do what you love man and just Ogden has such an awesome like cultural dynamic when it comes to its food and Lighthouse has always been you know able to give me that kind of creative freedom which is you know they give me the opportunity I just run with it and I absolutely love that you are here because a lot of us don't think of food first with the Lighthouse we think of music and drinks you know and that sort of atmosphere and so let's talk more about what you have to offer 
Um, I'm going to give you the same question as far as first time in, what should I try? And then we'll sort of dive into some of those restaurant week questions. All right. Um, your first time in, what should you try? The deep fried bacon mac and cheese bites with the chipotle aioli. Mm. Mm, yeah. Oh, it's, it really does. it's <laughs> absolutely evil and in the greatest way. But that, uh, that recipe I'd been working on for a couple years, it's like that or our chicken stuffed waffles. I like that he has an affinity for Bob Ross. And oh, I'm yeah. wondering if he works on his recipes like Bob on a painting. Like, okay, drop a little. Well, yeah. And I mean, happy little bacon. Sorry, yeah, happy little bacon. I accidentally <laughs> made this like garlic herb aioli once, you know? Like, <laughs> happy accidents, right? <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, are, you, are you going off menu as well with your restaurant week choices? Um, we are. We do have some of our constants uh, like that are uh, spinach and artichoke dip just because that's one of my favorite things i mean we even use that on like different sandwich specials and whatnot and it's just i love spinach artists it yeah. tickles my heart this is very very good thank you but uh we are going off menu with quite a few things and going with and against traditional pub fare like chicken tikka masala oh that sounds good yeah with uh cotilla cheese on top so you wouldn't immediately expect that at the Lighthouse. I absolutely love that. And this is going to be an incredible opportunity for many people to try it for the first time as well, which I absolutely love. All right, so let's, let's go a little bit while we have the two of you. Um, your thoughts, uh, yours as well, Sydney. You've been doing this for a long time. You eat out a lot. Uh, as far as <laughs> the, the eating scene in Ogden, kind of where that's going, where you see it right now. As far as choices, it just seems to be adding more and more every single year, which is fantastic. Um, some of your favorite places to go where you see the strengths and areas that we can all sort of work on collectively because I do know the power of the the customer and sort of the audience base as far as what we're looking for. What do you what do you see, you know, as far as the the, the eating scene? Where do you like to go, the two of you? Because I know that there's that camaraderie among the restaurants in town. So where do you guys like to eat out? When I have time. When you have time. <laughs> yes, I'm thinking an I idea. I cook at work world. and I cook at home. Like that's kind of my life. And, but I'm... Lucky Slice is definitely a go-to. It, it kind of feels like a, like a third home, I guess. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I think a lot of us could probably say that as well. Yeah, I frequent Lucky Slice for sure. And uh, like I said earlier, Slackwater for the, I mean, beer selection alone is, I like to try new things as far as, and I get to try stuff there that I have that I haven't got to quite yet. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I get to do yeah. homework away from home sort of thing. Yeah. I like so. that your homework is trying new beers. That's yeah. not a bad gig. <laughs> that's not a bad gig at all. <laughs> Cindy, where are you going now? So my favorite place to order um, whatever the chef wants to send me yeah. is either Tona or Hearth on 25th Street. So Tona, I never go in and look at the menu. I... I look at my waitress and I say, what does the chef want to serve me today? And never go wrong. Can never go wrong. That's so. true. I, I look at the menu at Tona, but I don't know what I'm looking at. So I, <laughs> I basically just get whatever they want to it's bring me. It's sometimes good yeah. to defer and <laughs> to it trust is. your server, <laughs> to trust your chef. I mean, if I can ever talk to a chef, that's, I mean, that's the best question you can do, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's like one of the funnest things, especially as, you know, a chef is like people just being like, well, what do you want to cook me? Or, you know, what ideas do you have? And OK, so there's a secret sub menu that's never actually printed. that's always going on. And Restaurants usually have secret sub menus. Well, yeah. And being able to do things for like <laughs> it's my a secret vegan like and vegetarian that. friends, too. <laughs> like now that I've been experimenting with like plant fair, it's just like there is no limit in like ceiling in this industry. So like when people give you an opportunity to, to do something, it's it's like a big hug. You know? Oh, big hug. Oh, so special. I have a Bob Ross hat. Of course I like big hugs. No, of course you do. Sydney, yeah. most of these restaurants have, are, are repeat offenders to Restaurant Week. They've been on for a pretty long time. Yeah, so some of the founding restaurants yeah. of Restaurant Week would be Sonora Grill, Roosters Brewing, Tona. Um, you know, they've they've been part of it since day one, and they're mm -hmm. really the, the restaurants that came together and put – you know, created Restaurant Week and, and saw an opportunity to be able to have a culinary event here in Ogden. Um, and then it's been really fun to see some of these other restaurants, you know, pop in and want to participate. Um, but what I love about it is not only are you getting good food, uh, you're able to try some new things. You you know, the I, I think that the 
the chefs want to collaborate with you and want to know like your ideas on what you would want to see on the menu for next year. Um, but then you're also seeing so many different types of food represented from so many different cultures and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a really, really fun way to really experience Ogden's dining scene. And and you're right, it is growing. Um, We are seeing some really fun fusion, you know, foods here um, and where people are playing with different ingredients um, and getting really creative also like with their desserts and appetizers, not only their entrees, but getting really, really creative. But then also the presentation is beautiful too, you know, so it's this whole, you know experience from the visual aspects of your food you know to how it tastes to the sounds and the smells when you're in the restaurant it's just it's just a full body experience I think you're right and I think the attention to detail in the atmosphere of the restaurants themselves have all been I mean, taken into account and even just more so each time because uh, when I definitely go into a place the atmosphere is super important to me clearly important with all the work that you've done here at the Angry Goat uh, who designed uh, that would be, he's one of the current owners now. He owns the building. His name's Dan and his construction crew. Um, he came in and, well, like I said, we pretty much, they let the building do most of the work. When we tore away ceilings, we tore away two different ceilings and exposed these rafters that were already this color and that wood was already there. So Is that amazing? I love the really old building out. so much. So. I can't imagine at any point why anybody would cover this up, right? <laughs> yeah. I think the more you expose the more just incredible beauty. This all this brick on the inside. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't even imagine. Yeah, we really, really that. lucked out because it could have been, uh, I mean, for all we knew, cinder block and, you know, tin ceiling or something. But I don't know. We yeah. really lucked out. This was the original color. Yeah. So oh, we didn't great. we didn't paint that at all. We just kind of went with it, and made it a little bit more kind of industrial look and just expose the yeah the prettiness of the original building. So oh, that's awesome. Nicely done. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for thank taking you. some time. Um, any last comments, anything we should know about the Lighthouse or Angry Goat for future visitors, particularly for Restaurant Week coming up? Well, I had a question for Sydney, maybe. Uh, do you know if B Street Roosters is doing Restaurant Week? Are they part of it? or B Street's not part of Restaurant Week. Oh. Uh, so I think part of it is that they, I mean, like you guys, they're a bar, not a restaurant. Um, and where they've only been open for a few months, I think that they're going to let this year slide. And I bet they reconsider for next year. It's a good question because (laughs) Roosters is participating. And so if you go to the B Street, they're not. So you have to go to the Roosters on 25th. Yes. So Roosters on 25th Street, go there for restaurant week. Um, B Street Brewery on 24th and B Street. Um, They are not doing the two for 10 or three for 17, but they do have excellent food if you haven't had their naughty brussels sprouts you gotta go check those out so (laughs) you know you know how close (laughs) i I am one of my closest friends is is jackie the brewer over there and i oh i'm ashamed to say i can't even believe i'm saying this that i haven't been over there (laughs) i know oh my gosh (laughs) what the hell about the fact that when you're working four jobs and you're going oh home, you so gotta sad. go you gotta go it's beautiful b street is beautiful nice. um another restaurant that i think we'll see on restaurant week next year will be utah um so they're opening oh, yeah. up this weekend yeah. um or actually tomorrow i believe utah is yeah, opening Utah's up tomorrow. um tomorrow so march brewery. 28th um so they are a brewery but they are they have a restaurant license so you don't have to be 21 or older to go into oh, utah wow. you can take your family there um, and it's beautiful their menu looks amazing and I am confident that they will be part of restaurant week next year and then also and I think they recently made the announcement too and um, uh, a good friend of mine is involved uh, with them as well as this new WB's that's gonna be opening up over at the monarch and so I've gotten just a little sort of taste of what they might be introducing and so the fact that we already have all of these joy and these are just the ones that we can name off the top of our heads right now yeah. but each year if we're able to now are you do we are we, do we have to cap this at a certain number or is this can this it's list 25 keep growing you're gonna need 25 a is a pretty big yeah no <laughs> a pamphlet i like that if we because these logos are getting very small <laughs> yeah nope restaurant we can continue to grow as our dining scene continues to grow and wb's will be will be a really great place so it's actually the owners of pig in a jelly jar who are opening up wb's in the monarch um so yeah so that's that's three new options for next year and i am guessing we're gonna see many many more restaurants come into downtown 
around throughout this next year. Um, Ogden is growing into this amazing artistic and culinary outdoor adventure yeah. town. Um, oh my gosh, how lucky are we? That sounds amazing. We are so spoiled. We're so yeah. spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's the annual Ogden, Utah Restaurant Week. Visit Ogden, uh, which I don't think is on the pamphlet, uh, helps organize this event and uh sponsors as well so it looks like a big one is u.s foods presenting this year yes yeah. thank you u.s foods for being our title sponsor year after year and nicholas has really stepped up their game as well and um you know they both really support our restaurants um and this yeah. looks like shane's word right here i love this notoriously, notoriously. delicious that looks i mean great. we are notoriously independent so yes. that's so that's the visit ogden yes, uh exactly. motto tagline is notoriously independent uh we want to show our grit also with our you, you know our progressiveness as yeah. well you know so uh, notoriously delicious i think is a great way to capture the diversity of restaurants that we have here because uh, no matter when you come to ogden no matter where you go to ogden like you're gonna feel that undertone of our soul which is a bit gritty um and we define that in a specific way so if you want to know more about that like <laughs> come and visit <laughs> you'll be able yeah. to experience that um and so yeah so notoriously delicious because i'm pretty sure that's the experience you're gonna have here again april 4th through 13th any questions or you want to see who is serving what go to ogdenrestaurantweek.com that's ogdenrestaurantweek.com again it's ten dollars for a two uh, course lunch and seventeen dollars for a three course dinner 21 local restaurants participating. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank yep. you, guys. John Cheers. would say the mountains are calling and we must go drink beer. I think it's how that goes. <laughs> I don't think this is exactly what he said, but it's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cheers. cheers. Yes. Yeah.